Hi, I'm Annika Johnsons from Al Johnsons in Sister Bay. I hope you enjoy my new video series called Door County Girl. These are stories of my life, the people and places that I love, and of course, how we all survive here in Northern Wisconsin. You can come back as often as you like, but don't forget to subscribe to Al's YouTube channel. I'll be posting lots of really cool new videos. So let's go. Welcome to another episode of Door County Girl. And again, I'm back with my brother. It's me, Rolf. Yep, we're back here in the beautiful Door County in our friend's kitchen. <laughs> yep. So we don't have to mess up our own. <laughs> and we're gonna make a tasty recipe again today. And this is something good and hearty for the winter. And we're gonna make a yellow split pea, right? Yes, it's... But not with ham. Rolf's a ve vegan. Well, I'm not vegan, but today we're going to make it vegan. So it's a vegetarian style of soup. Um, what we're going to omit is the ham or the salt pork that there was typically be put in there. Um, these uh, ingredients are also available at our shop and online. Mm -hmm. um, it calls for a very more complex recipe on the back, which is a wonderful recipe, but it's more like a full meal. So this one here calls for actually cook off uh, short ribs. And um, you, you, sh you should give it a try, uh, by all means, but if you want to do something real simple, real easy, a uh, uh, split yellow pea soup, this is going to be the one to do. And what's, what's neat about this, the ingredients are so few, uh, say if you're at home and you might have some spices, or you know, I'm going to make this soup. If you want to invite somebody over, say, hey, Kit, bring two carrots. Don't even tell them why. You know, call up uh, Bill and John. Bring an onion over <laughs> bring and uh, bring some parsley <laughs> over. It's like making stone soup, right? Right. So everybody just adds a little something to it. And you say, all we need is this, and we're going to make a, a really, really nice hearty soup. I like that idea. You know, everybody brings something. Just and we're one ingredient. Make soup. You know, I and like we're it. all going to sit around and make one one batch of soup. Okay. So anyway, what I need you to do is peel those carrots, and I will dice these onions. All right. And again, and, Rolf doesn't like anything to eat anything with an eyeball. <laughs> Nothing with a face, we like so, to say. So you can are. use a yellow onion, you can use a red onion. I just happened to grab a red onion because it was smaller. And we'll have the recipe online that, that I like to make at home. Um, we also have a very, 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 very wonderful uh, split yellow pea soup that we serve at Al's. On, it would be only on a Thursday, but not on every Thursday. Um, and that's the one that our uh, sh Swedish chef Freddie makes. It's the yellow one. And right? uh, yeah, it's 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 fantastic. And uh, he is heavy on the ham on that one, so he's got pork in his. Yeah, but if anyone finds out that we have yellow split pea, <laughs> they're always like, Oh, oh yeah, my they want to know what day, day we're having. What it. day? Well, it's always on a Thursday, and yeah. you know, there's a there's a unusual reason, I guess. Well, I shouldn't say it's unusual. It's a practical reason why they have it on a, a Thursday. Do you know what it is? I do not. So, as I understand, back in the, oh, around the 1500s, uh, they decided that nobody was going to, everybody had to fast for okay. Lent, right? So then, if you were going to make it through fasting for the religious holidays, Thursday was the last meal you'd have. And they figured if they made themselves a nice, big, thick, hearty bowl of split pea soup, it would, it would last them over throughout the fasting. And so it got carried on for many, many years, all the way from the 1500s to the 1800s. And then as I understand it, the Protestants said, this is crazy, there's no more fasting and required by law, and uh, you can eat what you want, but the tradition carried on. So they still fast. So Thursday nights usually. Thursday is pea soup, and then they would eat, usually a uh, full meal would include Swedish pancakes as well for dessert. Oh, that's a great meal. It, it, Nobody should a, be it, complaining a, about that. It's a very good meal. Yeah. So my so next. So in the restaurant, we do split pea with ham. Yes. Every 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 Saturday. Every Saturday. Now that's green split pea. It's green split pea with ham. Yes. Every and Saturday. The uh, yeah, and every Saturday at Al's we have this, and on occasion we have this on a Thursday. Now. Okay. If the cook is in a good mood, and if you call ahead of time, and you say, geez, I, I want to have that yellow split pea soup, and I know you only serve it on Thursdays, 
What Thursday? Well, he never really knows, but if you say, I'm coming in a particular Thursday, they'll usually jot it down and they'll make it on that particular Thursday. Yeah, now we're going to get bombarded. Well, you could, then calls. you can sit at the table and go, hey, they made this soup just for me. We'll make sure we put Freddie's phone number on, the, on this episode. You know what I going to love us. You know what I forgot to bring out here, Annika? What did you forget? Uh, some olive oil. Olive oil? Yeah, do you see if you grab some Ooh, olive oil? Where's the olive oil? Yuck, 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 yuck. Probably in the pantry here. Oh, there it is. So go behind me and turn on that burner. Okay. To a medium high heat. This one? This one here. Okay. Go to about number eight. Eight. Okay, it's on. All right, and then we're going to put about, pour what you could guess to be about two tablespoons of olive oil in that pot. Okay. Olive oil, two tablespoons. Coming Just right guess. Up. I am a chef. I would guess if I were you. He can show you how simple it is to make. You spill a little bit extra, it's okay. Okay. All right, so once this gets a little to temperature, all we're going to do is saute this with some herbs and spices. And then we're going to add the stock. What's the stock? The stock we're using today is a vegetarian stock. So you can buy it pre-made, you can make it. There's some good recipes that just using a carrot, celery, onions, and uh, reduce it down with a little salt and water, and boil it away. Uh, what I use here actually is um, Bragg's amino acids. You see those in the store once in a while? Um, no, I'm it's not a really bottle. a soup maker. It's called, it I'm says, it says B-R-A-G-G. -G. They're popular, I think they're from Goleta, California. I've never seen And uh, it's been around a long time. Okay. But anyway, a little squirt of that in any water. You've okay. got yourself a perfect vegetarian vegetable stock. Now I'm going to have to check it out. It's, it's, and it's good on everything. It's, it's almost like, uh, what's that other thing that uh, you guys buy once in a while? They, Starts with an M, uh, Maggie, M-A-G-G-I. You sprinkle it on salad sometimes. Oh yeah. It's a lot like that. Okay. You could use that can be turned into. I know a, what that is. So here we go. The olive oil is sizzling away. So we're gonna throw in the carrots and the onions. We'll save the parsley a little later because it's kind of gentle. Some gets in there. It's not a big deal. You know what I noticed? We have our little Swedish dish cloths in here because Rolf's kind of messy. And um, oh, you know sometimes what? we have to, and, and guess what? Our mother doesn't work it here. doesn't work here. She doesn't work in the kitchen That anymore. reminds me. That I reminds know. me. Somebody told me an excellent tip. Now, if you take one of those and dampen it. Which is like. You have one already. Their festive one back here. Put it down on the bottom here, and it'll keep your cutting board from sliding around. Oh, look at that. Who taught you that? Uh, a good friend of mine by the name of Kit Boots. <laughs> Kit knows everything. That's just crazy. He's, uh, you know, Rolf always says that he's the knower. <laughs> and then he is learning things all the time because yeah. he's always on the computer. And then he tells us about it so we can become the thinkers. He's See. the knower and we're the thinker. But I think Kit's the knower. I, sometimes I think Kit might have one up on me. Sometimes he might be the... Kit Boots is our marketing manager and, in, and he's in charge of like... Everything that goes wrong at Al's besides you. <laughs> he does all the you phones when they go down. He yep. calls, we call Kit. What happens when the computer goes down? We call Kit. Poor Kit's wife and Kit's kids. Good thing they have a nice Grandpa G and a Granny that they yep. can jump in any time and babysit. Okay, while this is going on here, we also pre-measured some herbs out. This is going to be fennel. We'll get the recipe online so you'll be able to... This is smells uh, like limpa. It does have mm. a little bit of a licorice smell to yep, it. This yep. is going to be uh, oregano, yep. dried mustard, garlic, and black pepper. Oh. So the ingredients are super, super simple. So you want to go ahead and toss those in here. All right. Number one. Number two. Here comes the mustard. Black pepper. Never have enough black pepper. I and you know what? I, I'm using a wooden spoon here because it's my spoon of choice. And the garlic. Garlic. And I, every time I get a wooden spoon, Annika, I cut it off. 
Right. I don't like that long stem there. I just. You know what I think of when I see I, the wooden it's like, spoon? I like to choke up on the stick a little bit there. It's a spanking machine. Oh, Jesus. My mom used yeah. to always tell us she's going to get the wooden she spoon did, out. She had that wooden spoon that would hang in the cupboard. And it, yeah. looked like, it looked like one of those cartoons, like Hansel it, and Gretel had a big divot to it. Yeah, so you could it was actually, in our cereal you could cupboard slurp hanging out of, there. Yeah, you could slurp out of it. It was so big. That and the All she'd have to do is go, shake the spoon at you. And, and then we'd bolt. <laughs> we, she couldn't catch us, though. No. That was the one good thing. Sometimes we'd hide it on her. Oh, I'd take yeah. the spoon and, and, and move it. Well, good luck with spanking us. You don't have a spoon anymore. What about this little bugger over here? You know, we're going to add that when we put the liquid in it. That's a bay leaf. These are the secret leaves over here. And not everybody has bay leaves all the time, but like I said, let's go back to my uh, invite idea, right? Okay. So if you tell somebody coming over, it's like, bay leaves? I don't have any bay leaves. Would you put me in charge of bay leaves? Well, you know what? They're not that terribly expensive, and you can make one trip to the grocery store and buy the smallest container of bay leaves there is. Or you could call around to your neighbors and see if somebody has one. And you'll probably have it for 10 years, <laughs> Yeah. you'll never use it again. That's why I say buy them small. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and put the split peas in here. All right, yellow split peas. And I'll go ahead and add that broth. Oh, we're going to add this now? Yep. Oh, yeah. Now. That smells really good. Yeah, doesn't it? You know what really smells the best out of it, I think, is that fennel. Yeah, and it not smells many like And not many people cook with fennel. Oh, this makes it the soup. So now it's got uh, a little bit watery look to it right now, but as we know, split peas will thicken up ah. to the point where you might have to add more liquid to it later on. So we want to bring this to a boil, okay. and then once it boils, we're going to turn it down to a light simmer. And the last so you know how I love broth soups? Well, you can throw the bay leaves in here, by the way, now, too. Um, is there any, well, uh, not quite. I guess that was a dumb question. I was going to say, how come we can't just eat it like that, but the peas are all hard? They'd be rock hard. Then yeah, be, yeah. Then you'd be another you know, crown. But I mean, it would be a tasty soup if you didn't put the peas in it with all those Oh, yeah. Grape. You know what? And I'll tell you another trick you could do. Because I'm not a cream soup person. I'm a broth soup person. You know, there's another trick is um, the, the Knorr Company, which I think it might be a Norris. Swedish company, yeah. K-N-O-R-R. They have a vegetable soup that you makes a great vegetable uh, chipping dip for a, for, a, for a football party or something, right? Okay. Chip dip. But you can take that, follow the recipe as a soup, and add split peas to it. And you, it's got your carrots in it. It's got your parsley. Ooh, it's got a lot of the ingredients that? in there. So if you're in a pinch, and you're just like, you know, I don't want to make all that you know, hard, heavy work. I'm just going to grab a pack of that, follow the ingredients on the, or the recipe on there, and just from add Norris. split peas to it. Yeah, delicious. Now. We already took the liberty to make a batch over here that yep. I got so slightly this heating up. How long up. does this take to get? Yeah, at least an hour. So an hour you have to have this and on. And that's if they're split pea soup. Now I use split peas today, and that's what we use at the restaurant most of the time because we can get those in bulk. Okay. Typically in Sweden, you would use a whole pea, yeah, and that's what we are, sell. These are not split I up. can't stress enough that you should <laughs> soak them overnight. Now, you can get by with a pressure cooker. You can get by with a quick boil. You know, the other way, you took these peas, and you put them in some water, boil them hard for two minutes, and then shut them off with the lid on them and soak for about four hours. And you can kind of skip the overnight soaking that way. But the best thing to do is soak it overnight and change the water. Well, that's a good tip. So... I, you know, I've never made homemade soup in my life. Ever? Why would I want to? I work at Al's. I go in there every day and there's a homemade yeah, soup. Yeah, but you make a lot of other homemade stuff. What's the first thing we always ask in the morning when we come in? At what's like, the soup? What's the soup going to be? Because that's going to be our lunch. Wasn't there a commercial? Is it soup yet? Yeah. Is it soup And yet? why should I make soup and I get leftovers? I mean, here I am. Soup I, is I, fun to make. And like I say... Soup is fun to eat. Take my uh, my advice as far as if you're going to invite company. I need two carrots. I need an onion. I need this or that. If you need several things and make soup. I kind of like that idea. Make stone I'm going to have everybody come over and they're going to bring a secret ingredient. We're not going to tell them what kind of soup we're going to make. It's just going to be everybody bring an ingredient that's just going to turn out like it is and we have to eat it. <laughs> no, no. But it has to be edible. That's like a wapatui party. Yeah, but a soup wapatui. Sheesh. It'll be like a big... You all know what a Wapatui party is when you go to those old uh, teenage uh, uh, drinking parties in a field somewhere and somebody's got a garbage can, hopefully it's clean. I don't clean, know about that. And those. you dump a booze, bottle of booze of any type you want in there. And then you sweeten about? it up with something and then uh, Kool-Aid or whatever and that's what you drink. Yeah. And I guarantee you'll have a headache tomorrow. And you're guaranteed to be not being very active a couple <laughs> hours after that either. If you don't so what we're going to do to save us some time, we're going to swap these over so I can heat this one up. 
Now and, that looks delicious. And, and, uh, and look how thick it okay, got. Okay, so I don't think they can see it, but it is By comparison, a really beautiful orange th color. That'll Well, the carrots made that a little bit orange. Well, um, it almost looks like squash, like a butternut Like a butternut squash. squash. But it's not. But this is a very, but you very can see thick, the yellow peas hearty, in it. hearty soup. So you can see why this would last you. Uh, if you had a fast for a few days. Oh my God, it looks delicious. And you know what else is really good about uh, the pea soup and the simplicity of this one especially? Yeah. Especially this one without the meat and stuff like that. If you're gonna go camping, all your ingredients are dry. Okay. For the most part, carrots don't need to be refrigerated. Right. Nor does the onion. Right. So you can just take that you know, along Throw with you. Throw it in you, your bag and, and go. And then uh, make a hobo stove and away you go. Bob um, likes hobo stove oh yeah. stuff. Oh yeah, I like doing a little camping. He had a little camp area. I, every Christmas, I usually got him something for his little camping yep, area. Yeah, I still got everything too. Ready? I'm waiting for a new camping area. Yeah, he lost his camping land. But uh, I'll find another one before long. Somebody bought that piece of property. Yeah. I'm glad they did though. I'm glad somebody's enjoying it as much as I. I think did. it was for sale for a long time, yeah. and we finally and it sold to the right people. It did. So that we're excited about that. Rolf just wants to be the caretaker now, so <laughs> I would he can love go to, back yeah. out there and just squat on their land. Just once, on, once a year on my birthday. <laughs> Take a little bath in the lake. Yep. You bet. All right, so let's, uh, oh, you know, we didn't do it yet. I didn't throw the parsley in this one. We're going to do that one last. But so that stays there for now. I can't slide this because it's got a dishwasher oh, yeah, underneath yeah, because, it. Yeah. Give me those bowls. Okay. And let's, well, you I and have, I try so this. There's like this jar, this squeeze bottle here okay. of Lars's mustard. Yep, it's not just a product placement trick. Freddie's secret ingredient Freddie is, is our, is our chef. main kitchen manager yeah. chef at he, he's, he's a general manager and pretty much. And he's Swedish. And his secret, and not anymore because I'm going to tell you what it is, is he squeezes some Swedish mustard in his yellow pea soup. Yes. Now you notice I used some dry mustard when I made mine, so, um, but if you want to try it, it's a it's a good way to try, but I think we should try it this way yeah, first. Yeah, and this one's the mild and sweet, but we also have it's called spicy, and it looks a little more stone ground. But again, I always stress it is not spicy. It's, it's not it's, spicy. It's like a like grape poupon without the wine. Right. It doesn't like go up your nose when you take a little sample. Ooh, look, and I got a bay leaf. Ooh. Somebody must have left the back door open. Well, I you know gonna have to open this mustard because I am a mustard person. You're gonna. You're going to insult me if you don't try it without mustard. Well, I'm going to taste it first okay. without and then with. Don't you know that? If you go to somebody's house and they make something, don't add salt. Don't put ketchup all over everything, everybody. All right, let's give it a try. Until you taste and tell it. Tell me what you think. Okay. Mm. It's you know hearty. What? The peas are just right. Yep. They're not hard. But you know. But they're almost like that good potato consistency. That reminds know? me that you said that. Another mm. thing that I've seen people do, and I haven't done it, they'll transfer this whole thing into a blender. Oh, now, so because it's not chunky? So it gets pureed almost. But now, why? Um, I why? think a lot of times when you see pea soup, don't you remember the Scooby-Doo? It's fog, it's as thick as peanut butter. Don't you mean pea soup? You eat what you like, Doesn't I'll eat what Freddy I Doesn't like. Freddie puree his? Yeah, he, well, he takes a large uh, immersion blender and, oh, and purees his. Oh, because I didn't ever see peas in now, his soup before. But a lot of guys will take, or a lot of cooks will take, just a small portion, like maybe a cup of it, and puree only that, and then blend it back in. So it, 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 you still enjoy the, I uh, like it like the this. visual. I mean, I like them both ways, but I like this so you can, it's like a, it's like a little stew. You know what? If, I don't eat a lot of salt. Now, if I found this a little too salty for myself, how would I back that off a little? You know, the thing is, we didn't add any salt to it. Right, so you know? what does the salt come in? Like the... I think sometimes that anise, I mean the, the fennel, would uh, give it a little more salt to your taste. And uh, the fact that I made this with a different um, a veggie stock, because I couldn't find my Bragg's that day. Okay. That one to be a little bit of extra Do salt. Do they make low salt? Uh, no, but the Bragg's you can cut in half. Okay. They do make a low sodium mm. vegetable broth. And you can make this with a chicken broth, a beef bouillon, however you want, but I chose today to make it vegetarian. I hate to tell you, but the mustard's amazing. Yeah, well, then I guess I will try it. I mean, like, really, I've never tried it. I just always hear people say how good it is. Didn't you say we had a waitress at Al's? Yeah, one, one of our waitresses. Begged everybody, oh, don't eat that soup until I put some mustard oh, in it. Oh, yeah, every Saturday. And I can't think of who it is, and they're going to kill me when I say this, but I can't remember who it is, but she always puts the Swedish mustard in her split pea soup. And then when she tells her customers, they all think she's crazy until they try it. Like when I tell them... It's almost them, sweet. I know. Well, I always try to say, 
put lingonberries on your meatballs and mashed potatoes, oh, yeah, yeah. and they all think I'm crazy until, until they, they try, try it. it. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm, really good. Well. well I love it. It's delicious, Rolf. Yeah, and we're breaking a rule. We're not eating. It's not on a Thursday, but. Yeah. Shh, don't this tell is a, what day is it today? Tuesday. It is a Tuesday. Tuesday. Well. Well, it's another. I think you can make it any day of the week. Serve it on Thursday, though. Yeah. If you want to be traditional, we got to make it Thursday. And, and as in feel all. Feel free to invite Rolf and I over. And as in all soups, it always tastes better the second or third day. It probably gets nice and. Um, it, like the spices set in more, maybe. I don't know. This is really good. Well, I'm glad that I came today for this episode of Door County Girl, and you joined me because I never would have made you know, soup before. And you'll see how you now you see how easy it is as well. Don't eat it all because you know Bill and John are still waiting out here for theirs. Yeah, well, they're on the other side, so. <laughs> All right, well, don't forget to like and subscribe. Yes, thanks for coming in and checking out another episode of Door County Girl. And uh, we are going to be back again soon with some more tasty recipes. We shall. And, uh, yeah. You want a little more? I do want a little more, but I'm going to put mustard on mine. Are you offended? No, I'm not offended. All right, well, I'm going to do it. Thanks for coming, everyone. Cheers, everybody. hey do. Happy Thursdays. Bon appetit. I love this. Mom would love this. Mm. You better save some for her. She'll say, oh, Rolf, this is so mm. delicious. No, she'll tell me. You should in make Sweden, this in the restaurant. In Sweden, this is how we do it, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching Door County Girl. Don't forget to subscribe, and we will see you next time.